Oh, thank you so much, Anna, for that lovely, warm welcome. And I echo what Anna said. Thank you. Huge thanks for the Imagery of Freyal for allowing us to come and share our experience and to offer the support as well. So thank you so much, Anna. So hi, everybody. My name is Nisha Ridley. Um, and as Anna said, I am the Education Organisational Development Lead alongside my colleague, Hannah Tizard. And we work together with Anna at All for Maternity. I am a midwife um, and in my previous role before joining All for Maternity, I worked as the Educational Workforce Lead for NHS England. And previous to that, I was with Health Education England. And my area of work and my passion for this um, area of work around international recruitment and how I could best support midwives coming over from um, other areas across the world over to England to join our midwifery workforce here in the UK. I started um, as part of my role in NHS England is I started the work um, together with my colleagues in the team around, you know, how we're going to best recruit other midwives from across the world to support our midwifery workforce here and to support the families that are um, being cared for across the Northwest. So um, I spent some time with that team looking at the best way to do that, obviously working really closely with our regional colleagues and our national team as well. So I'll share with you my experience along the way um, and the support that we can offer and how we can really celebrate those that have made the decision to come over and to help us to support their journey here across um, midwifery here in, in, in the UK as well. So just to give you a bit of a quick outline as to what we're going to look at. So we're looking at, you know, obviously midwifery is a global issue, as Anna said. We've got a huge shortage of midwives across the world. Um, but we noticed, you know, particularly across the NHS that we had a, an issue here, um, you know, in terms of what we needed in terms of our workforce needs to support women and families here in the UK. But obviously, Caring for women across the country, they have their different needs in terms of our local uh, communities that we have, but also for the midwives coming over to different parts of the UK. It's cold and dreary here in the northwest, which you know can be a real challenge in terms of adaptation and things. So we'll have a look at that too. How we can best support our colleagues who are coming over here in England to support our midwifery workforce, what opportunities but what challenges they may face as well, how we can best support them and how we can support them then obviously to help nurture and grow their midwifery career here in the UK as well. So obviously when midwives come over um, from other parts of the world, as Anna said, it's quite a, well, it is a very robust um, process for them coming over. But in terms of the recruitment and the hurdles and the barriers that they have to overcome to even start applying for midwifery and um, over here in England, you know, it's huge. We're not talking of newly qualified midwives. We're talking about midwives often that have had many years of experience. And it's really important, I feel, to really acknowledge the knowledge, the skills and the expertise that they bring with them. Often when um, I used to interview midwives from all areas of the world, um, most of them were working in senior leadership positions, but a lot of them had continued with that clinical care. A lot of them had cared for families in really challenging situations environmentally, but um, socially, culturally as well. So they bring a vast amount of experience over with them. Obviously, there are challenges adapting here to our National Health Service in the way we practice, but it's really important to acknowledge actually what expertise and they are bringing with them, that leadership that they're bringing with them as well. And it's so wonderful to hear from them and be able to learn from them um, in, in areas that we probably maybe have never thought of as well. So when we um, look at obviously bringing midwives over from um, other areas or for them to want to obviously apply for them to come over, it's really important to um, acknowledge actually what a midwife is. And, and from terms of the NHS and the national team and regional teams as well, as well as local integrated care boards and local maternity systems, we'll work off the International Confederation of Midwives definitions. So they will look at actually what is a midwife. Um, and it's really important this because obviously we want to ensure that the safety and quality of care that these midwives are offering is to that same standard. 
um, and that our families are safe when caring for, but that also when they come over, the expectation of what they're going to be doing in terms of their work is, is you know, is known and is available as well. So the general competencies are looked at, they look at, you know, what kind of experience they have in terms of antenatal care or pre-pregnancy care, care during labour and birth and ongoing care of the mother and the baby and the family and the postnatal care as well. This can obviously challenge, challenges are that it's different across all areas of the world, but the basic competencies are, are the same and that's really important when we're mapping over the competencies of midwives that have come over. It's also important to acknowledge that um, most um, when we're when we're asking candidates when they're applying that the role of the midwife is recognised often in their title as well. So sometimes they're called nurse midwives, but what's important is that they have had care of women in that pregnancy period, in that birthing period, and that postnatal period as well. And again, you know, going back to the Lancet series, it's again really important to acknowledge, you know, the definition of a midwife on a global scale as well. You know, understanding and recognizing actually that is skilled in the knowledge and compassionate care for women, for their families across that whole continuum is recognizing that role of the midwife and those core skills and those clinical skills and those practice skills, you know, including caring for women in a normal physiological environment, but also taking care of the social side of things, the cultural side of things as well is really important. And this is all acknowledged as part of the international recruitment from a national perspective across the NHS and from a regional perspective as well. And regional teams will work closely um, with trusts in their area as well to understand and acknowledge actually the work that those midwives are doing when they're applying and recognising actually the skills that they will bring as well as part of their role when they apply here too. So obviously, as Anna said, again, we, we are well aware that there is a global shortage of midwives um, across the whole world. Um, and this can be obviously we, we hear about it here in England. It's really acknowledged as part of the NHS workforce plan. But what's really important is that when we are asking midwives to come over and support our workforce here in England, that we are doing it in an ethical way. And this is really important and it has been the main focus of recruitment right from the beginning when I was working on the NHS regional team. And that value is held by everybody working in the national team, the regional teams, the local teams as well. There is an ethical framework for recruitment and this applies across all of healthcare. Um, and this will apply especially for nursing and midwifery as well. If there is a country that is on what we would call the red list, then it is not allowed for us to even approach anybody working in those areas um, to bring them over because it is recognised that the health services in the country that those people are applying for really need the expertise of those midwives and caring for those families, the women, the families and the, and the babies in that area. And it is right that we obviously don't um, jeopardise anybody else's health system as a result of that. As part of the work that we do as part of the um, national framework, we also look at actually what the experiences of people um, when they come over here to England. It's really important from an ethical perspective to make sure that people are supported in a, in a really, um, in, in a supportive and nurturing way. What can be a challenge for midwives and nurses, um, and we learned a lot from nursing because nursing was well ahead of the game in terms of international recruitment. What we learned a lot from nursing, and then that applied to midwifery, is actually the challenges that people feel when they come over here. Not only are they uprooting their own lives, they're often leaving families behind. And what was really important in line with the ethical recruitment, but then the retention and support of those midwives and nursing staff as well, is that we tailor that support around them when they arrive. We know from the evidence um, and, you know, the, I've listed a couple of um, studies down there, but also from news from the Nursing and Midwifery Council and from the Workforce uh, workforce NHS documents as well, that often midwives will experience communication challenges. You know, they feel that they don't often have their voice heard. 
Um, they often feel when they arrive here, the cultural challenges, you know, as simple as eating different food and not feeling at home. And actually the times are different, the shifts are different as well. There's a variation in the way that we practice here um, across the NHS. Um, but also bullying and discrimination. And I'll go in that a little bit more detail as well. That is one that is really highlighted, particularly in the workforce agenda around the res document with the NHS. And we'll share about how we can best support midwives um, to not experience these challenges too. So going back to the international um, ethical framework for um, recruitment, again, it's really important to not... Um, recruit midwives and nurses from countries that are on the red list and in terms of the recruitment toolkit that we follow from a national scale but a regional scale and a local scale as well you know this is the toolkit it's hugely in detail and most um, recruiters and workforce leads in each trust as well will be well aware of this document and from a regional perspective we follow it really carefully to make sure that we are also supporting midwives in the best way to arrive here but that we're helping them to make the right choice in terms of their own home country needs um, but for them as well as an individual person too. Often trusts will use um, agencies, regions will use agencies, um, but again, we're really confident in terms of the ethical recruitment that we only use agencies that work with this ethical recruitment toolkit. And that obviously really important as well to share that message right across the NHS. We are also aware, like we said earlier, about the local context. There are definitely differing needs from different trusts. So you might find as an international midwife, if you're coming over, if you've been from another country, you might apply to one trust or you might apply to a different region. And although generally they may ask the same um, general things for you, there may be variations that you notice in terms of the geography or the environment or social context and cultures that you care for as, as for the families that you look after. Um, and, and, you know, it's important to be aware of this because actually what is important is that actually we're recruiting people who are aware of those needs. Um, and also different trusts will recruit large, larger or smaller numbers of midwives as well, according to their workforce needs. And what is also important is that we have the midwives to be able to support those midwives as well through a coaching or a mentoring system. So when I first came to NHS England and looking at the international recruitment of midwives, this is exactly how it felt. It felt like this massive mountain. I was stood at the bottom looking right up going, where do I even begin? And like we said, we, we learned a lot from nursing and my colleagues in the nursing department at uh, uh, the regional teams had really started this amazing work. I've got to put a big shout out to Trish who actually really started and led on this work right from the beginning. Um, and once we got into the flow of it and I really understood and I read the recruitment toolkit and I got familiar with the um, recruitment leads in each trust who'd had loads of experience for nursing and I learned from them actually what should we do, what have we learned from nursing, what have we learned from other professions, it felt like we were really getting going. We had... Um, a target given to us from the national team, which was important to our to meet our workforce needs across the Northwest. Um, but it, to me, it was really important to understand that local context as well. So in discussion with our trusts, actually, what do you need in terms of your workforce? How can we best support you to support the midwives that are coming over from it, from all the areas of the world? Um, but then how do we support them to best support families as well? And the first thing we learn is actually let's have a starting post. Actually, let's look at where we need to start and where we need to go from there. And a big thing was let's welcome them with open arms to begin with. Um, the feedback that I've had from midwives that have come over, you know, they say that when trusts are welcoming, particularly even on the interview panel, if trusts are a present and are visible on that interview panel, it means so much even if they're not able to come and do the interview, even if they're able to send an email to welcome me um, over to the Northwest or welcome me to the Trust, it means so much. And that communication all the way through is so important to our midwives that are, are you know, are, are changing their lives, sacrificing so much at home to come and join our workforce here. 
the recognition actually that um you know I will bring with me a different culture I will bring with me different experience let's celebrate that that they bring over with them let's listen to them let's listen to their expertise and their area and if as you know as this evidence is telling us here if we really embrace it and celebrate it we're going to have such a wonderful multicultural system which is going to be so different for our women and families that we're caring for if we think about the embrace report and we think about the workforce needs across the nhs it's so evident to us that a multicultural environment is one that's going to thrive and where we support each other as well so again, looking at the evidence, support is a huge thing. And this is support right from the beginning before midwives even come over, all the way through to supporting them through their transition journey, so the preceptorship and beyond. So bridging programmes, even contacting them, making points of contact, making celebration events, making time to speak to them online is so important. Doing some face-to-face -face colleague training when they arrive here, greeting them at the airport, greeting them at their destination when they've got here, supporting them through their midwifery oskies. And then following that as well, organising social events. We had a fantastic event over in Liverpool. Um, it was around Christmas time when we, some of the midwives arrived and they fed back to us how excited they were that they'd had time to spend with midwives outside of the NHS, outside of that working environment, because sometimes that's where we really get to know each other the best, isn't it? So, um, you know, it's really nice to hear that feedback. And I think something that we cannot underestimate is the stress that must be involved for those midwives when they first come over here. You know, not only are they coming to a different country, but the stress of booking the airport, making sure the visa requirements are all complete. Often we were booking flights two to three days beforehand because it took that long for all of the visa requirements to get completed. Um, you know, routing, leaving your family at home and coming to a place here where you're living in a very small accommodation that's provided for you, not having any say over your OSCE because you know you've got to go in and it's a full six weeks of training, for example, it must be really stressful. But what we do know is actually... The solution to care is not, is the solution to dealing with stress is not just about self-care, it's about all of us coming together. And that means the trusts, the regional teams, the national teams, midwives supporting other midwives, managers supporting our midwives, supporting them through that transition. And we know, don't we, if we support midwives and we support each other, we get the best out of each other, really. Creating that sense of belonging. And we encourage as part of the regional team forming little communities of practice. So getting little WhatsApp groups together or Facebook groups together um, and creating a space where they could chat and spend time together. Um, you know, even one OSCE provider we dealt with and we worked with, you know, went out to pick out all food that they would have usually in their home country um, and created that sense of culture around food and that belonging, that little community there. And it was really important because actually those midwives felt that they had a space where we could chat together and that space where we could belong together. And it really did bring out such joy and happiness where they could share over food because we all love food, don't we? And it's a really um, a space where we can come together, share and talk and actually, you know, share our challenges, but share our successes as well. And with that sense of community and that sense of belonging, that's where your support is. You know, there is that acceptance there of actually, you know, I'm going to celebrate diversity here because it's going to bring so much care for the families that we have in our local communities as well. It's going to have such a significant impact, so much feedback that we would get as a regional team around Thank you so much for helping me and supporting me and listening to me and communicating with me. It was so important. And, and it goes back to a saying of that people never forget how you make them feel. And those early days when they are feeling stressed, it's so important for them to feel welcomed and that sense of belonging as well. So three P's to remember, professional, pastoral and practical support. And this is around the support that we can offer our midwives. What is really important from a clinical perspective is not just to offer that professional care, but to offer that pastoral care and that practical care for them as well. And that isn't just from the beginning, but that is all the way through their journey too. Here at All for Maternity, we have just launched our brand new hub. Um, but on top of that, we also worked really closely with our regional teams who have funded um, a programme for our internationally educated midwives to welcome them. 
and are in touch with the Educative Midwives, if any of them are here from the Northwest, you will know that you're already accessing this through our full maternity website. And there is a dedicated area that is just dedicated for you to work on your English language skills and your CBT, which is part one of the NMC test. And we're really excited to share there that actually those internationally educated midwives will have access um, to the practicing midwife and our journals and if you're not already a member here and you want to be a member please do contact us at the practicing midwife where you'll get access to all the online resources which are the journals the brand new hub as well the learning sharing and caring spaces where we create a sense of community for you to meet each other and create that networking as well but also supporting your training as well because your English language support and your assessment preparation are so important. And on that, we've really developed and listened to the feedback from Anshashley Educated Midwives around what you need in terms of preparing for your test of competence and your ROSCI as well. So as part of that, we will focus on the preparation to practice, but actually ongoing, what do we really need to support you, to support your career and support your ongoing development as well? So this is the um, pre practice preparation spaces that we have, but it's also important for us as part of our learn, share and care ethos as well to create that sense of belonging and that sense of community space for you there. So a really huge thanks to all of the practice education leads across um, the Northwest for supporting us with this, for all of the internationally educated midwives, for the regional team, the national team, for the funding as well. And we're really glad that everybody's been able to access this and the brand new hub, which we're really excited to launch this week, um, which will give you on the go training and support in terms of your future leadership as well. So just final slide now, just to share, to say, you know, what's the next steps? Well, for us at Awful Maternity, we want to work closely with our regional colleagues again to look at ongoing leadership and development support, recognising all of those skills and expertise that our midwives bring over with them and actually how we can support you to support our women and families, but through your own leadership development as well. So be working closely with our regional colleagues to do those final stages of that funding. And we really hope that you join us here at All for Maternity, um, where we will share our sense of um, understanding and listening to you and learning from you, bringing all your expertise. We hope to um, learn through you. We share with you and care with you through our spaces and our networking. Um, and just thank you for being part of our membership and as part of our journey here. And we really hope that, you know, we can help and support you in any way that we can here.